Um, the countdown has begun because in exactly a week, Shavuos will be here next Shabbos night. Just an introductory Shavuos thought to get into our story of the week. It says that had any Jew been missing, Hashem would not have given the Torah. Two Jews who were infamous at the time, Datan and Aviram, who led a rebellion against Aaron and Moshe, they were from the 600,000 Jews that had to be there at the giving of the Torah. So it doesn't matter exactly who, what, when, where, every Jew needs to be connected to each other, to the Jewish people, to Hashem, to the Torah. And I think that's something that this story brings out. There is a Chabad house in Beijing, China, and the Shliach's name is Rabbi Shimon Freinbach. And he has a very interesting crowd that uh, spends time in his Chabad house a lot of, the whole gamut of Jews find themselves in China doing business or traveling for whatever reason, and they know they have an open door and an open house and a wonderful meal waiting for them on Shabbat. So he shared this story once when he was visiting New York. He was invited to speak at the Safner community on a Shabbos night. He shared the following story that I'm going to share with you. That one Friday night, at the services before the Kiddush, before the Friday night meal, two strangers came in, which was very common, an older man and a younger, probably a 40 year difference between them, something like 40 and 80. And uh, they came into the shul and they sat together in the back of the shul and they began the service. And the rabbi notices that the older man put his head down in his hands and began to cry uncontrollably. And all through the service, through the singing, through the dancing, this guy is just crying. So the rabbi walked over to him and put his hand on his shoulder and said, is everything all right? Can I help you? And the rabbi man said, I'm fine, I'm fine, don't worry. Well, the rabbi made, made it work out that at the meal, this gentleman and his friends sat at the rabbi's table. And at the rabbi's table, he would always ask everyone to please stand up, introduce yourself, say your name, where you come from, and share whatever you like to share about yourself. Just introduce yourselves so we can all feel like we're part of the family. We know something about each other. So when it came to that point in the meal, the rabbi turned to the stranger and said, would you care to introduce yourself like everyone else? And he said, yes. And he stands up and he says, my name is Shmuel Katz and I spent four years in Buchenwald and I managed to unfortunately see my parents and my siblings and my friends and my family all die, some in front of my very eyes. I survived the war and I ended up traveling, I believe, to Australia. And I built myself a life and I became very successful financially, but I was very upset with God and I vowed to never step foot inside a synagogue. And I had no problem keeping that vow until today. We found ourselves in China, and my friend here, my business partner, he pointed to a younger man, insisted that we come to the Chabad in Beijing. And I said, I don't do synagogues, I'm not going. So he said, it's not really a service, the service just leads up to the meal. It's the meal we're going to, it's an amazing meal. Come, you'll enjoy it. The food is delicious, the atmosphere is great. So I said, okay. I'm not really going to the synagogue, I'm not breaking my vow, and I'm just going for a nice meal. So we came into the synagogue to pay the price, sat down, and all of a sudden, when they began the songs, the familiar lechadodi, and the tunes, and the kaddish, and everything, all of a sudden I was overwhelmed by the memories, and even the actual presence of my parents, my grandparents, my siblings, my uncles, my aunts, I felt as if they were all there with me, and I felt very, very much at home. And that's why I'm here tonight, Shmuel Katz. As he's getting ready to sit down, a lady at the table stood up and said, excuse me, did you say you spent four years in Buchenwald? He says, yes. She said, then surely you know my father. My father also spent the whole war in Buchenwald, and he survived. And his name is Laser, I forget the last name. And this Shmuel Katz almost faints. He says, Laser is alive? He said, right after the, we were you know, freed, we lost.
lost touch with each other. I didn't know if he survived. Many people ate themselves to death after the war when they were freed. I can't believe he's alive. I, I must speak to him. So she said, well, after Shabbat, I'll be glad to put you in touch. I'm sure he'll be pleasantly uh, surprised to say the least. He spoke about you. He also didn't think you had survived the war. And the shul cat says, you know, your father, myself, and one other man, we were the three Kohanim of Buchenwald. My name is Katz, there's another one whose name was Cohen, and your father, and the three of us were the three Kohanim, and very often people would stop us and ask us to give them the priestly blessing, which we always did. And I can't believe that, that he's alive. And after Shabbat, he, they put him on the phone, and they connected, and Obviously, this Shmuel Katz, who hadn't been inside a shul for 50 years at least, his life was changed. Now, as the rabbi is telling the story in Williamsburg, New York, to a group of Satmach Sidim, all of a sudden, there's a voice from the back of the synagogue, and it says, tell Shmuel and tell Lazer that the third Kayin is also alive. Everyone turned around, and one of the respected heads of the yeshiva in the Satmar community, whose last name was Cohen, was there to say, I'm the third Cohen, and I thought both of them were dead because I lost track of them. And I can't believe they're alive and I must get in touch with them. Now, where am I going with this? I'll tell you very honestly. When I first heard years ago that Chabad House was opening up in Beijing, China, I just thought, wow, of all the places in the world, China needs a Chabad house. Whose lives are they going to impact? What are they doing over there? But as I started off, the Torah is not complete and the Jewish people are not complete when we're not together. And the Chabad houses and reaching out to people is one way of lighting that soul and getting us together. So, Make sure you're lighting up your own life, your own house, your own soul, and those around you. And that's the best preparation for receiving the Torah. Have a great week and have a great festival of Matan Torah, Simcha Bethimis.